Hopkinton holds a unique place in the world of marathoning. Not only does it host the start of arguably the most prestigious marathon in the world, it's the home of HKM TV and the 26.2 Foundation. And we are collaborating to create a series of programs that we're calling the Runner's Journal. We have a great appreciation and understanding for what it takes to prepare for a marathon and to ultimately achieve the goal of finishing that 26.2 mile challenge. Our hope is to create a series of programs that will add to your enjoyment, education, and training. I hope you'll take an opportunity to join us in the future as we explore the many aspects of the marathon and marathon running. Hi, my name is James Cassidy and I'm the president of Platinum Physical Therapy here in Hopkinton, Massachusetts. While we work here in the physical therapy clinic, we get a lot of runners who come in and tell us that they just thought they had to run in pain. They're used to having pain during their training sessions, during their races, never quite understanding that you don't have to have pain while you're running. So today what we'd like to do in this show is show you different techniques and methods to limit those injuries and prevent you having pain while you're running. We have with us Dr. Julianne Rickert, who's going to show us some of these techniques and methods that can help you out during your training sessions. Thank you, James. So today we're going to be talking about pain, when, er when it may show up during your marathon training, and how to prevent it from hopefully coming on so that you don't need to see a physical therapist. So what we'll generally hear from runners at any point during their marathon training cycle is that pain is just inevitable. You're running a marathon, you're going to have pain. And it's going to be something that potentially may limit your running, it may limit something in your daily life, but it's just the way that it is. And we're here to debunk that, that that is not how it has to be. Um, if you take a little bit of the preventative measures to make sure that that doesn't happen, um, it can save you a lot of time in you know, potential rehab and also in just getting you to your goals of being at that start line on race day. Generally what we try to recommend with folks is that you get early access to care. So the earlier you can come in for a physical therapy consult if you do begin to have pain, and pain is less so that kind of achy soreness that most of us feel after, and that could be even after a, you know, a hard workout on the track or that 20 mile run. That soreness, that slowness going up and down the stairs is fairly normal, but that persistent type pain that's potentially affecting how you're running, how much mileage you can attain, whether or not you can go up and down the stairs, sit through your work day comfortably. That's the kind of stuff that we um, try to encourage people to come in as early and as often as possible. So again, within that first three to five days is essential. Um, if you can come in earlier, it makes your episode of care a lot shorter. It keeps you potentially out on the roads either entirely or gets you back out on them faster if you're not having to take any time off from running. And that would be, um, for most runners, you know, top priority for sure. Um, physical therapist is going to be able to offer you options for cross training, maybe strength training, different ways to keep you on the roads or get you back out there as fast as possible. So today we'll go through a couple of um, just preventative strengthening movements you can go through and then a dynamic warm up and a cool down that you can incorporate before and after any run to again, hopefully prepare the muscles for what they're about to do before you run and then cool everything down and kind of get you back to center so that the next day your muscles are feeling prepared and again ready for not only your next run but whatever your daily activities may be. So I'll be bringing um, Brendan over now and we'll be going through again a few of these movement patterns that any of you could implement starting today for your marathon training. So hi Brendan. So thank you so much for being part of this today so that you can demonstrate with us some movements again to keep people out on the roads during their marathon training. Absolutely. So, what I'm going to have Brendan do just to demonstrate four easy exercises that anybody can do, again, pre-run, later in their day after their run, whenever it works into their schedule. It's going to work on keeping your lower body strong and resilient to the needs of running. So Brendan, I'm going to have you lie flat on your back here. So the first movement is going to be a uh, straight leg raise. So very easily named. So what I'll have him do is I'm going to have him flex his foot up and squeeze the front of his thigh. And then I'm going to have him raise and lower his leg just to the height of the knee um, that's bent here. So go ahead for me, Brendan. So slow and controlled is key. So that's going to be the case with all four of these exercises. Um, with these, you know, people like to rush them. You know, again, if it's something where you only have an hour to fit in your run, squeezing in some strength training is probably um, potentially going to be a big ask for some folks. But still, slow and steady is going to be key. So with this, for again, just general kind of strength and preventative, um, an easy set and rep range is going to be two to three rounds of 10 repetitions per leg. So 
Brendan's doing a nice job, nice and slow and controlled here. And we'll just show it on this leg. So Brendan, now I'm going to have you bend your knee for me. And we're going to roll into bridges. So with bridges, he's going to keep his knees bent and he's going to be trying to lift his hips up off the ground. Um, depending on your level of skill with these, um, you can have your hands at your sides if you need a little bit more stability or cross across your chest like Brendan has here. So Brendan, go ahead and lift your hips up for me. So as Brendan's coming up, I would cue him to kind of squeeze his glutes as if, um, you know, at the top to kind of pause and hold and just again to slow the exercise down more than anything to really get that good strength benefit. It's also going to stretch the front of your hips as well, so it's a little bit of a two for one benefit here. So a little bit more bang for your buck. And again, two to three rounds of 10 would be a good kind of strength repetition type range um, for again that pre run potentially or um, later in your day if it fits better in your schedule. So next one I'm going to have you do is a clamshell. So Brendan, I'm going to have you roll onto your side. And the key with this one is that initial positioning, so making sure you're all the way on your side, not rolled back here, because a lot of people tend to lead with their backs. So we want to make sure that he's in a good position here. And then he's keeping his feet like they're super glued together. And then the knees are going to come, the top knee rather, is just going to come up and then lower back down slow. So it's going to mostly have the effort is going to be on the side of the hip. It shouldn't feel like it's straining in your back or anything like that. And again, going to be working to just get the hips strong so that as you're running, you're able to provide a little bit of stability to the lower legs. So similarly, two to three rounds of 10. And it's up to Brendan whether he wants to stay on one side and take breaks or flip flop between the two sides of his hips really are burning with this one. And if you're somebody who has never strengthened your hips before, this may be one that you're definitely going to feel um, on that side of the hip. So then while you're already on your side, you would then straighten your leg out. And now we're just going to make the lever a little bit longer. So a little bit different muscle, potentially a little bit more challenging. So again, posture is key. He's going to be rolled over right on his side. And then he's going to do a side leg lift. So again, kind of flexing that foot up. So he's engaging across the whole front of the thigh as well as into the hip. And with this one, you don't necessarily, height isn't, um, it's important, but you don't want to go so high that your leg kicks forward or you start rotating through your back. So Brendan and I probably would even go a little bit less range of motion coming up right about to there and then back down. So that again, you're not kind of compensating with your lower back. So it's one of the few times where I would say, you go again, less is more potentially with this one. So you don't compensate. But again, these exercises can be done three days a week for maintenance. So if it's something where it's hard to fit into your schedule, three times a week will cover you. But if there's no harm in potentially doing five to seven days a week, again, especially as you get deeper into the throes of training, your legs are going to feel tired, giving that muscle a little bit of a strengthening stimulus to kind of balance out the endurance that you're going to be going through is never a bad thing. So the frequency is variable depending on your schedule, but really that three days a week will cover you. Um, so next we're going to have Brendan up and moving. We're going to show you how a dynamic warm up would look that again you could use before your run to prepare your body for movement. And then a cool down which a lot of people tend to skip that you're going to make sure that you do after your run to make sure your body is ready for the next day's activity. So for a dynamic warm up, the purpose of the dynamic warm up um, is to prepare your body for what it's about to go through. So if you're about to run, you're not going to want to just get up off the couch, roll up out of bed, and then just start moving. Your body isn't prepared for that. So that can be potentially where injuries could crop up. In this case, you want to make sure that you're getting some of the blood flowing. You want to stretch the muscles out, but with active motion. Um, a lot of us have been taught in the past that you want to try and stretch before. So people will do static stretching, kind of like what I'm doing. This isn't necessarily going to prepare you for the act of movement. So these are movement patterns that would help you potentially stretch out the different muscle groups a little bit more and just get your body a little bit more limbered up, a little bit more ready for um, the task at hand. So to make things running specific, we'll have Brendan go through a few exercises. Um, he'll just do them within a short range, but you would do them potentially, you know, again, up and down the length of your driveway. If you're at the outdoor track, you can do them for a few, you know, 20, 30 meters, whatever works for you to get your body feeling the most prepared. But general rule of thumb is you want to try and do as many exercises and movements as you need where your body feels ready for activity. If you don't feel quite ready, your hamstrings still feel a little tight. Just give yourself a little bit more time, a little bit more warm up, so that your body isn't having to do that warm up while you're out on the roads already and spend the first you know, mile, two miles of your run trying to prepare for movement. So Brendan, what I'm going to have you try to start doing here, um, starting off, you just want to do nice, slowed, controlled movements first. So things like knee to chest pulls. So he's going to bring the chest up. You're going to kind of be stretching the glutes, the hamstrings, the back of the legs, getting the hips to move through the range of motion. Coming back, I'll have him do butt kicks, similar kind of thing. So now we're just moving the muscle, the hip in another direction. 
getting the knees to stretch a little bit. So this would get him more straight plane. So then we always want to incorporate some extra motions as well. Running is very uh, kind of straight line, straight plane, but it's good to kind of get the hips moving in different directions. So I'll have him do some hurdle walkovers. So truly imagining like you're stepping over a hurdle. So that front leg and the trail leg are both coming over as if you're avoiding an obstacle. And then you do the same thing going the other direction so the other leg is leading. And he's incorporating the arms into this because even though the legs are the main driver, the arms are incorporated as well. So it's good to loosen up the upper body a little bit. Um, something that would be next kind of next level up would be something like a lunge. So having him stepping forward, dropping the knee down. This is something that's a little bit higher level, but if you have experiences with lunges, it's a, definitely a good movement to just go through and again, prepare the muscles, get the quads firing a little bit, get the glutes firing. And again, he's tying the arms in as well to get things moving there. Um, to kind of prevent um, any knee type pain, you would um, want to, again, get the quads firing, get the glutes firing. In this case, we would have him do something like squats as well to follow that up. So having him standing in place. And you don't have to go crazy deep. These aren't an exercise where we're going for um, perfect deep squat form. We're just trying to get the legs moving um, a little bit more again before the run. So to not leave out the upper body, we would incorporate some twists as well. So I'd have him do um, kind of stepping back again into maybe that lunge type pattern and just twisting the upper body back and forth. Yep, to get the upper back moving as well. So we want to open up the chest, open up so that you can breathe easily and getting those arms moving. Now onto the dynamic warm up. So this is that preparation before you leave your house. Um, you can do these inside in the warmth of your house, or if you go over to the track, you would make sure that you're getting your body moving. The goal with these, again, is to make sure that your body is prepared and ready for activity. So just getting off your couch, getting out of your car after work, or rolling out of bed doesn't quite prepare your body for the activity that it's about to undergo. So we want to make sure that you're doing these movements to limber up the joints, get the blood flowing, and make sure that you're not kind of working through all that tightness and soreness in the first few miles of your run. Um, we want to make sure that you're feeling good as soon as you get that first step going. Um, so these sorts of exercises, there's um, a lot of different options that you could choose, but this would be a concise five minute option that you could use again right before you start your run that would be applicable to most runners. Brendan, I'm going to have you go through a few dynamic movement patterns. We'll start off with slow movements and work your way up to things that are a little bit more kind of full body um, as your muscles get more and more warmed up. So to start, I would have him do something like a um, knee to chest type pull. So again, nice and slow and controlled. He's popping up on his toe. You don't necessarily have to, but again, something where you're getting the whole body to kind of loosen up at once. Coming back, I would have him do some butt kicks. So kind of working the, um, the knees and the hips in the opposite direction. And Brendan's doing a good job incorporating the arms. That's something that people tend to neglect while they're running, but it is a major component as the arms move back and forth. So then to work the sides of the hips a little bit more, I would have him turn and start doing some walkovers. So as if he's walking over hurdles. So he's going to have the lead leg come up, and then the trail leg comes up just like that. And then he would keep facing that same direction and head back the other way. So getting the hips as opened up as possible, because running is so kind of straight line, short motions. So we want to kind of exaggerate the motions that the joints are going to have to go through as they're running. So next I would have him move into a lunge walk. So a little bit higher level, but good for kind of really stretching the quads, activating the glutes, and in his case, activating the arms. So on the way back, I would potentially have him add a trunk twist. So having him come down, twist that body over the lead leg so that he's opening up the chest, opening up the arms a little bit more, again, to make breathing easier, and everything else that goes along with running. So having him in place, I would have him do some body weight squats. So I'll have him show facing the camera and then facing away so we can see. So as he's coming down, we're watching his knee position. We don't want the knees to come in and cave in towards each other. He's up nice and tall in his chest. He's not going terribly low, but that's OK because he's not sacrificing good form for depth, which is um, a common problem that we see. So I don't care how deep you go. It's just a warm up. So like this, you can see again, his chest is up nice and tall. He's doing a good job of keeping, um, keeping his knees aligned well over his toes. So he's doing a good job there. So I would probably follow up at that point with starting to increase some speed again as well. 
So incorporating um, arm swings into things, so having him doing some skipping movements, maybe some lateral shuffling. We don't have a lot of room for him to, to demonstrate those specific movements, but he could start doing full arm circles forward, full arm circles backwards, maybe even side, you know, opening and closing in front of the chest. But again, having him do things where he's doing a little bit more dynamic, skipping, shuffling, getting the blood moving a little bit faster, again, as you're kind of preparing for that next transition to speed and running. So for your dynamic warm-up, we want to keep things to be about five to 10 minutes long. We don't want to make this a marathon on top of your marathon. This shouldn't be something that's an added stressor to you. It should make your body feel good and prepared to move. Um, so the next thing that will be the most important um, after the run is to do a really good cool down so that hopefully, again, that dynamic warm-up the next day, you feel a little bit more loosened up, a little bit better prepared, so you hopefully don't need to do as long of a uh, warm up the next day because you've properly cooled down the day before. Here are the exercises I recommend for a cool down. So this is where you're going to want to incorporate static stretching. So that um, slow, long, pro -hold prolonged hold of a stretch. Um, Brendan is going to demonstrate first up in standing a calf stretch. So you could do this holding on to your kitchen counter, holding on to your car, the fence at the track, wherever you may be. So Brendan's back leg is the one that's feeling the primary stretch. So he can do this one of two ways. Um, runners are gonna potentially get tight calves, so this is a good, uh, just again, preventative thing. But you wanna get straight knee for kind of the bigger muscle right above, um, right at the base of your knee, and then your feet a little bit closer together and your knee bent is gonna get more further down by your ankle. So with all of these static stretches, the recommendations are gonna be the same where you wanna try to hold at least 30 seconds per exercise per leg. So again, you want to try to prioritize kind of the major movers, so that's what we're going for here. So he's going to hold for that 30 seconds, and then I would have him transition to the mat to start doing some things for his hips. So I'll have him in kneeling. So Brendan, I'm going to have you up tall. You're going to um, come into half kneeling, so bring one leg forward. So this one is going to be getting the front of his thigh into his hip flexors and into his quads. So what I'm going to have Brendan do is stay up nice and tall the whole time. I want to make sure he's not arching his back because that's a common thing we'll see, so maybe even leaning his body forward a little bit. And then visualizing almost like you're tucking your tail between your legs, and then coming forward a little bit. So shifting his weight so he's feeling that stretch again across the front of the thigh. That hip flexor muscle does a lot of work over the course of a long run, so we want to make sure that it's properly lengthened back to its resting length so that it's prepared for the next day. So again, that 30 second hold. In this case, if his back was feeling it a little bit, he could add an arm raise to kind of get into his um, lower back and abdominals a little bit more. But again, pers uh, personal preference. So then I would have him lay on his back. And he's going to do a figure four stretch for his hips. And then, so this is one you can do in multiple ways. So the way he was initially showing where he was just crossing the knee over, um, over the opposite is a good place if your hips are really tight. If you're somebody who can handle a little bit deeper of a stretch, you can hug your opposite knee to your chest. And then this way you're getting a little bit deeper into the hips. So Brendan, I would want you to lay your head back. So you, because you're that tight, I would probably not recommend you do that level. I would have you scale back to this way so you can more comfortably rest like this so you're not straining your neck. Then again, 30 seconds per side. Um, you know, if you have the time, it would be good to try and get in a couple of repetitions of that, but at least holding for that 30 to 60 seconds or so. Um, then I'll have him sit up, and I'll just have him do a seated hamstring stretch in this position. So go ahead and um, tuck one leg in, and then sitting up nice and tall. So again, Brendan's <laughs> hamstrings are fairly tight here, so I probably wouldn't have him lean so much because that's going to strain into your back. So I would have him sit up tall and just kind of settle forward as like that. Yep. So that way Brendan's really getting into his hamstrings and less so straining his back. So again, 30 seconds or so. I don't expect many of my runners to be able to touch their toes. So this is a fairly common presentation that you would see, but you don't want to just reach for your toes in, um, and potentially strain your back. So this is fine if this is as far as you can go. Um, we wouldn't fault Brendan for this. These are the exercises that I would recommend for, again, preparing your body for the next day's activity by loosening up the muscles after a lot of mileage is put on them and making sure that you're not stiff and sore going through the rest of your day. Thanks for joining us today. 
Hopefully you've learned some great techniques that'll keep you out on the roads while you're training for your marathon. In future episodes, we'll discuss more specific diagnoses that we see all the time. Patients come in with plantar fasciitis, IT band syndrome, and others that I'm sure you're familiar with as you've been out there training for your marathons. So join us next time and we'll help you figure out how to get over those and what we can do in the clinic to help you get you better. Mm -hmm.